Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. A big thank you for coming back and joining me on the channel for another video. We have been running a little mini series across the past couple of days. How would they do at Man City or Liverpool? We're taking players that are currently in the championship who are doing well for their own teams, putting them into the Man City and Liverpool team for one season only to see how they would do and see if they could hold their own in the Premier League playing for the two elite clubs that we have in England. So the first one was Alexander Mitrovic. Second one was Ben Brereton Diaz. And today we are going with another player who has Premier League experience, played for Sheffield United in the Premier League. He is Ollie McBurney. Uh, going to put him in to Man City and Liverpool for one season to see how he gets on. Before we show you Ollie McBurney though, please, if you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button, please consider doing so. It is so valuable for everybody to help the channel out. Any little interaction is important. And I appreciate everybody who has took the time to do that so far. But let's jump into the game and show you Ali McBurney at the start. And then we'll show you how he gets on at both clubs. We are now inside of FM22. We have fired up a brand new game. And we are at Ali McBurney's profile page. You can see that he is a 25-year-old at the start of the 2021-22 season. He has 16 caps for Scotland. Hasn't scored for them yet. He is also 12 under 21 caps with two goals from there. He has a contract till 2023, but he is listed and wanted by a few clubs too. So let's break down his stats. You can see he has some decent technicals, uh, dribbling, finishing, first touch, heading is good at 15, passing, penalty taking and technique are good there too. He has a full stack of yellows in his mentors. Which some are pretty decent. He has good teamwork. He has good bravery and composure. Also good determination. And then in terms of his physicals, he has a decent set of stats. What you would expect for a player with Premier League experience who's currently in the championship. You can see he has decent acceleration, agility, pace and stamina. He has some good balance at 14 and strength at 14. He has a good jumping reach of 15 to go along with his heading of 15. His personality is fairly ambitious. Although that player trait of argues with officials might get him in trouble somewhat. If we have a look at his career and see how he's got on then. Started at Bradford City in 2012-13. Then went on loan to Manchester United. Which I presume is one of those loans where they were just assessing him as a player to see if they wanted to sign him. Must have declined it because he ended up at loan at Chester. Swansea then paid £350,000 for him. And that took him out on loan to Newport, Bristol Rovers and Barnsley. Uh, he did go back to Swansea for the 18-19 season, played 42 games, scored 22 goals. So obviously some impressive form there. And that's what brought about a £17 million transfer to Sheffield United. One of Chris Wilder's big signings when they first got back into the Premier League. He scored 30, he played 36 and scored 6. He played 23 and 1 the following season. And then Sheffield United getting relegated to the Championship means that he's now about to play in this season. I do know as well, in that Sheffield United spell, there was some instant off the pitch that might have affected his performances somewhat, which obviously means that for a £17 million investment, Sheffield United probably aren't going to get that kind of money back. Um, I think though he's a decent player and on his day, he has a big enough reputation within the top two flights to be able to mix it up with some of the best. Uh, not 100% convinced that he's going to be a world star, certainly at the age of 25. He does have some growing to do, but probably isn't enough to elevate him to the top tier of where the players in the Premier League are. But still, we are going to try and find out what happens when we do put him in and amongst the likes of De Bruyne and Van Dijk and those kinds of players and see if it does get him to train on and see if he can mix it with those elite kind of players. So what we're going to do then is move him to Manchester City first, have a one-season sim, see how he gets on. Then he's going to go to Liverpool for another one-season sim and we'll compare the two at the end to see how he gets on. So let's throw him in at Manchester City and see how his first season ends up. It is now then the 31st of May 2022 and Ollie McBurney has completed his season at Manchester City. Uh, just by looking at him, you can tell that he's played a couple more times for Scotland, three more caps. Uh, he's still 25 years old, so his birthday is outside of the window. Uh, in fact, he's just... Five days shy of his 26th birthday. Uh, looking at his actual stats, you can see that there's been a bit of improvement. Corners, dribbling, decisions, flair, balance and jumping reach all have up indicators next to them. 
So his stats are improving slowly. Um, not too sure there's any more that will come of that. Uh, the most important thing, though, is how is he going to play? How did he get on in that season? So if we go to history and career stats, you can see that he managed to play 37 games in the Premier League. He scored 14 Premier League goals with six assists, one player of the match, and a 6.9 average rating. Overall for the club, 54 appearances, 17 goals. Uh, he had nine assists. He had two player of the matches, one yellow card, and a 6.95 average rating. So for a player with the player trait of uh, argues with officials, only one booking across 54 games is quite impressive. Also, a 17 goal from 54 isn't as you would expect, but it's still decent, isn't it? I mean, for a player who has previous Premier League experience and scored uh, six goals in his previous 36 for Sheffield United, I suppose you would want more. But a 14 in 37 is not a bad return for Manchester City. I suppose they would have padded their stats out from other places. Again, let's show you where we played him in the tactics. So the AT433, if you haven't checked that video out, please go do so. This tactic continues to win leagues. There is a whole video dedicated to it where you can find the download link for it. But he played at the top of the formation. And let's show you what happened in terms of competitions then. So Manchester City finished second in the league on 84 points. Running Liverpool close, only one point behind. If we go into the player stats, let's show you. They didn't really get anything going in terms of player stats. Bernardo Silva, the only one in terms of the assists. John Stones in terms of average rating. If we go to the other competitions, though, they were knocked out in the first round by Barcelona, knocked out in the fifth round by Blackburn Rovers, and they won the Carabao Cup. If you look, Ollie McBurney was the top goal scorer in the FA Cup with two goals for Manchester City. So overall, he has been a decent player for Manchester City. I wouldn't say he's one that's probably worth going out and spending big money on. But considering we only paid £1.6 million for him at the start of the save, he's getting 17 goals across 54 games. And that's in a first season adapting to a new team where he still has room to grow. Remember, he's only 25. I don't know how much more he has to grow. But certainly, being around better players, he has put in a decent shift and a decent performance in the first season. So, let's show you the second part of this experiment. Let's put him at Liverpool and see how he gets on in the same simulation for one season. Here we go then. Part two of the experiment is moving him to Liverpool. And again, he has completed a season at Liverpool. It's the 31st of May 2022, all over again. And you can see that, again, he's still... 25 years old in this save though a bit of improvement in terms of the Scotland international 24 caps two goals so he has obviously made some progress in that department um looking at his stats again some improvement corners crossing dribbling first touch heading concentration decisions jumping reach all showing signs of improvement so there definitely is a little bit there that you can unlock if you go and buy him Again, it was a £1.6 million transfer. Let's have a little look at his career stats so we get that season in focus. So this save, he played the full season, 38 games. He only scored 11 goals, though, but he was more involved in terms of assists and player of the matches. His average rating was only a 6.85. Across the season, though, 64 games, 23 goals. So he only got 11 in the league, but he did get seven in the cup competitions got five incontinental competitions, and he did get them two goals for Scotland too. So across the season, 64 play, 23 goals, one penalty, three assists, two play of the matches, no yellow cards again, which is a bit surprising, somebody who likes to argue with the officials. Uh, a 6.93 average rating. So again, a pretty decent season for him. Uh, show you tactically again. There he is at the top of the AT433 in an identical position. When we look at the competitions, you can see that he has helped Liverpool to win the league by 10 points. Liverpool getting 91 points in the season. Mo Salah was the top goal scorer there. So McBurney was way behind Mo Salah. Uh, does anybody else appear? So Trent and Virgil appeared in the average ratings. Trent in terms of assists. Trent in terms of player of the match. Addison in terms of the uh, clean sheet awards. So, yes, he has won the Premier League with Liverpool in the first season. Helping them to win the league by 10 points. He also finished as a Champions League runner-up. Uh, who did they lose to? It'd be Man City, won't it? Yes, of course. Man City, 4-4 in the final. And McBurney actually gets two goals in the Champions League final. So, 
that is a pretty decent game to show up in. 8.3 rated, two goals in a Champions League final. That is something definitely to be proud of for himself. He also won the FA Cup. And they also won the Carabao Cup. So with McBurney at the top of that tactic, Liverpool have very, very nearly done the quadruple. They have literally lost out on penalties from doing a quadruple in this save using the AT433. Absolute madness. You can see in terms of his goals, nothing really to write home about until he gets to the Carabao Cup where he finished joint top goal scorer with Mo Salah on five goals. So, as you can see, Ollie McBurney is a player that, again, he's not going to be an elite striker. But you put him in an elite team and he can start to produce some numbers. I know they're not astronomical and they're not what you really would want from a massive team. But if you need a rotation option and you're going to be able to put him in and he will score goals for you. And he's a decent enough player to be playing at Premier League level. I think for both Man City and Liverpool, he has done a fairly good job. What do you think of Ollie McBurney in this experiment? Could he have been better? Has he been a disappointment? Let me know in the comments section down below. Another experiment comes to an end then. And again, some interesting reading there. McBurney doing overall better for Liverpool, but in terms of the Premier League, certainly playing better for Manchester City. I think, as I was just saying, for £1.6 million, if you need a rotation option, obviously he's not elite. You're going to bring him in. You'll be able to score goals. If you were relying on him for the season, you might be in a little bit of trouble. The supporting cast seemed to carry him along. But to think Liverpool were only penalties away from him being a quadruple winner is something special. Right then, if you're at this point of the video, you're still watching. Firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button, please consider doing so. It helps the channel to grow. And I really do appreciate it. We have gone past 1,400 subscribers. We are well on the way to 1,500. If you can help me out, that would be fantastic. But for this one, I'm going to wrap it there. Come back and catch us again on another episode soon.